the Lord's day is the time when you begin to go through that door and enter into the realm of God himself. That's what it is. And immediately I was in the spirit and I saw something. We've gone in through the door into the heavens of our being and the first thing we saw was a throne. We saw the throne. Come on now. What is it that's ruling your life? Have you ever seen the throne, which is the throne of God? God ruling over your life? Come on. If God is ruling, because that's where the throne is, and he says, I'm in the spirit now, and I can see that throne, and of course, it doesn't just say, I saw the throne. What does it say? It says, I saw somebody sitting on that throne. Yeah. This is the Lord. This is the king of the, all kings. And he's on the throne in your life. How can you have God dwelling in us? How can we have God dwelling in us? And still have all the problems we have? How is that possible? Well, it simply means that the door has never been opened and you've never seen the throne because this is the throne of God. God controls the universe. I've heard so much crazy ideas, you know, from, from some of the preachers that are around, you know, saying that God's not in charge of this world, the devil's in charge of this world. Oh, Lord, help us. I want to tell you, God is in charge of this world. He owns this earth. He owns the heavens and the earth. He owns it all. Everything in the earth and everybody on the earth. There's nothing he doesn't own. Don't belong to the devil. God is in control of this earth. You say, well then why are the wars and why are the people killing each other and all this going on in the world? Well, it's all having a part to play in this thing we call life on the planet. God's still in charge. There is no good and evil in God because he controls what we consider evil, but it's not evil to him. There is no such thing as evil in God, right. nor in anything that he does. God is the potter. We are the clay. And out of one piece of clay, he can make a vessel unto honor, and he can make a vessel unto dishonor. He can make one that you would say, this is spiritual, this is good. This one is not spiritual, and it's evil. That's what we would say. God never said that. God said this one is unto honor, this one is unto dishonor. But the one unto dishonor is fulfilling the function of God exactly the same as the one unto honor. Come on, this is reality. You understand this? There is no good and evil. Good and evil is a concept of the, new, of the human mind, the natural mind. That's all it is. It's what we consider, we becoming the judge, we sitting on the throne, determining what is good and what is evil. You see, that's what happens in a lot of religion. Religion is letting man play God. Well, you've got to be careful. You, you must not cut your hair. You women, you're not, not allowed to cut your hair. You've got to make sure your dresses are just this far off the ground. You've got to uh, make sure you're not allowed to speak either. You know, you've got to be very, very quiet in church. And if you want to ask anything, wait till you get home and ask your husband. I mean, he won't know, but ask him anyway. You see, all of this, this is, this is man on the throne. It's got nothing to do with it. God is ruling and reigning. But there is a man on this earth that is going to rule and reign with Christ. And he said, if you will overcome, I will grant for you to sit with me on my throne. Yes, Hallelujah. And that's when we can take charge of our life. I want to tell you, so many Christians are still living in Egypt. And they're under a pharaoh 
whoever he might be, whatever he might be, might be sickness, might be pain, might be suffering, it might be some disease, it might be whatever. But see, Jesus Christ read in the synagogue that morning, remember, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bind up the brokenhearted. He's anointed me to release the captives. He's anointed me to open the prison doors to them that are bound. That's ministry. That's what I'm sent to do. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What am I trying to do this morning? I'm just trying to tell you what God is saying to you. He says, I want to set you free. Amen. I want to you to see that door open in here and see the throne of God in you. That throne of God is supreme. In other words, there is nothing that has power over God. Nothing at all. And people still talk about the serpent in the garden. Well, I want to tell you, he's got a squashed head. Yep. Somebody's already put his foot on the head of that thing. Yes, yeah. 2,000 years ago, as a matter of fact, the serpent died. And if you think he's still alive, that means you've been fooled. You're deceived. Yes, sir. Isn't that amazing? So, the throne is within me. And there is one sitting on that throne. He is Lord. You sang that this morning, didn't you? Yeah. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. What does it mean? He's in charge. He's in charge of your life. Well, then you say, well, why have I got all these problems? Because he's not in charge of your life. He wants to be. And the throne is still in there. And if this morning God opens that door for you, you will see the throne in there. But you might not see the one on it. Until God opens your eyes. And you recognize Jesus Christ is Lord. That means he can do whatever he needs to do in our lives. And he said, uh, he that sat on that throne was to look like a piece of jasper. You notice there's no image here. There's no image. Why? Because his spirit. Spirit doesn't have image. That's why God said you're not to make any image of God. No idol. And he says there was a rainbow round about the throne. This little incident here or that, that John talks about, the door being opened, realizing Christ is on the throne of our lives, was designed to set us free. Set us free from our problems, our headaches, our fears of the future, everything. Because if Christ is sitting, seated upon the throne of my life, I have nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. He is Lord. And so the children of Israel, they walk through the wilderness. Rebellious people? Yes. Uh, but uh, did they die of starvation? No. Even the rebellious people did not die of starvation. Did they ever die of thirst? No. There was plenty of water for them. Yeah. How did they know where to go? Well, because there was a cloud that guided them. You see, the one that sits upon the throne is able to guide you through life. Yes, sir. And you will never make a mistake. <laughs> you never make a mistake. Because he is Lord. Before you were born, before the foundation of the world, God had a plan for your life. And that plan he can fulfill for you. And that plan included the fact that you already have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. He said also that he has chosen you chosen you. That means by deliberate choice 